This is the plaintiff, Chenille Barnett. She says she met the defendant when she found him locked out of his grandfather's apartment, sleeping on the front steps of her building. Soon after, they began hanging out together, and he eventually moved in with her. Well, things didn't last long. He was physically aggressive with her. She threw him out, and now he owes her all kinds of money for rent, booze, and all the cereal he ate. She's suing for $1,007, the amount owed. This is the defendant, Daquan Butler. He says the plaintiff never loaned him money. She knew he had just been released from a six-year stint in prison and is now basically suing him because he ate her cereal? Come on, man. This woman's just being spiteful. He never agreed to pay her rent, and if she wants $3.69 for some cereal, he's happy to pay her for it. He's accused of going cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. All parties, please use your right hand. You see it? Come to order, please. Let against have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, ma'am. Chenille Barnett? Yes. You are suing Daquan Butler for $1,007 you say he owes you. How did you two meet? Um, I was coming home on the 4th of July with an acquaintance from an outing, and he was sitting on my step outside my house, I guess his grandfather. Is it an apartment building? Yes. Okay. His grandfather lives in the middle section of the housing, so I'm not too friendly, so my friend had, you know, started to make conversation with him, you know. What was he doing on the steps? Sleeping. Would you wake him up to have conversation? She did. Because normally you just walk over him. (laughs) I was, but because my friend is friendly, she started to speak to him. Because your friend is friendly and you're six foot what? Six five. Yeah. So your friend wakes him up right. to talk to him, right. and this she's is what time of the him, morning? This had to have been around seven in the morning. Okay. So she was asking him, "Are you lost? You know what you're doing?" Well, you so guys are coming home from right. a right. night out, okay. right? So I and I never seen him before. So she's asking him. She he goes, "I live here." So I said, "No, you don't. I never seen you. I've been living here for how long?" So then you know they're conversating. So I jump in the conversation, or whatever the case may be. So he asks me, can I use your phone? Because I'm trying to call my grandfather. So I said, this is your grandfather. So from there, the conversation began. I let him use my phone, um, making phone calls. He wasn't answering. He continued to knock, continued to knock. Then eventually somebody came to the door. When someone came to the door, it was his mother. His mother was up here at the time. Um, She let him in. Me and him were still talking, having conversation. So my friend, you know, she let me know, like, I'm not coming upstairs with you. If you want, you can walk me to the train station and I'm going to go home from here. Me and him decided to walk her to the train station. From there, that's where everything started. Well, Getting, what started? Well, if I would say companionship. I, you know, was making conversation with him, getting to know him. He's getting to know me. Um, he had asked me, he, can he come upstairs? He literally washed up on your stoop. Yeah. Yeah. Literally, the man just washed up on your stoop. Are you talking about, and you're out all night, and then you come home, and you find the man you want to talk to on your stoop. (laughs) After being out all night. Didn't find anybody. Making all kinds of effort all (laughs) night long. You come home empty-handed, and there's the gift on your stoop. (laughs) Not necessarily a gift. Yeah, it didn't turn out to be a gift. Right, right. Right. Yeah. Um, So he asked me, can he come upstairs? So I let him come upstairs. Um... From there, like I said, just continue to, to build the relationship. Um, two days later, his mom, you know, was leaving to go back to North Carolina or South Carolina. I don't know the exact state that she's from. Um, well, I hear, I'm asking him, you know, are you leaving with her? Are you staying? He goes, I don't know what I'm doing because my grandfather is acting funny. You know, he's acting like he doesn't want me to stay. So I'm saying to him, why doesn't he want you to stay here? I'm confused. How long had you been staying with your grandfather? For like two days. I was just coming home from prison, actually. Oh, okay. Where were you in prison? Um, New York City. Um, the what? Park. How long did you do? Six years. What did you do six years for? For assault. What kind of assault? A stabbing. Did the person die? No. It was more so. Uh, it was more so self-defense, but the people, I guess. Was it handle. domestic in nature? No. So you served six years. You had just gotten out of prison. Yes. Did your mother come up from the Carolina, which Carolina? North Carolina. Did she come up from North Carolina because you were coming out of prison? Yes, and she picked me up from the prison and we came to Brooklyn. And what was the plan? That you were supposed to go back with her to North Carolina? What was the plan originally? The plan was for me to come to Brooklyn and to see a couple people figure out, you know, I'm just coming home. I want to enjoy myself. What's home to you? Is home to you North Carolina or Brooklyn? Brooklyn. Well, I was locked up. My mom eventually moved down south. Okay, so you've never, that wasn't your place at all. All right, so you invited him to live with you? 
Well, I, me and him had a discussion. I asked him what were his plans as far as I, I was- You'd known each other, what, 24 hours? Yeah, I have a big heart, unfortunately. So I see- Is that what we're calling it? Yeah. A big heart. Exactly. No, that's big what heart. we're calling it. Yeah. No, a big heart is someone who works in the soup kitchen on Thanksgiving Day. Finding a man you like I'm and inviting him to live with you the next day that. is not a big heart. That's not a big heart. And if you don't realize that now, when you've ended up in court to sue for cereal, you are never going to realize cereal. that. That's not so right. let's That's talk not about right. what you're suing for. According right. to you, the guy who you found on a stoop, mm -hmm. who had just gotten out of prison two days earlier, yep. who had no job, no place to live, who you invited to move in with you, is supposed to pay you rent. Where is it? What's it going to? Where is it going to get the rent? Is it going to think it? How is no. it going to pay you rent? Right. So, like I was saying, after we discussed him staying in my house, you know. I asked him, you know, what are your plans? He told me I'm going to get a job. I'm going to try to get my GED. I said, okay, no problem. I have no problem doing that. I'm very familiar with school and how everything goes. So I said, listen, I will help you try to get your GED. I will help you get a job. I went to 123 William Street in Manhattan where they do like job fairs. I'm calling him on the phone. He's at my house. You know, got him interview clothes. Put on interview clothes and come meet me down here. I'm going to get you a job at this security company. He's asking me, should he put on similar to what he's wearing now to go to a job interview. And I'm saying to him, why would you want to put that on when I have, I got you interview clothes? Like What's interview clothes? Button up shirt, khaki pants, and shoes to go to look presentable for an interview to get the job. He never made it at all. Now, let me ask you what's going on here because she's suing you for eating her cereal. <laughs> and what's this about the CBD product? Oh, the weed? Yeah, she was had it weed or was it a CBD, CBD product? product. Weed. Fake weed. I don't okay, know what, what was it exactly? CBD weed. CBD. I don't weed. know what it is. That's a it looked like weed. So is but it, it don't oil? Get you like, is it, like what weed. is it? What did it look like? It's. It looked like weed. Did you smoke it? Yeah, but it don't get you high like weed. It doesn't. I don't know. It's weird. Well, anyway, she had bought the weed. Long story short, she couldn't do nothing. Where with had it. she bought the weed? From a smoke shop. Okay. And she couldn't do nothing. What was it exactly? It's, it's, it's CBD weed. I had purchased it because I was in a car accident May 5th of last year. So. Okay. So that's legal, right? Yeah. yeah. Is it? Here? Yes. Yeah. All right. So why did you have her, her CBD smoking product? Because I asked her. Because <laughs> I asked her. She couldn't do anything with it. What, what does that mean? She couldn't do anything with it? Well, she didn't want it anymore. No. Can I, can I answer for that? What does please? that mean? I asked him, can he get rid of it? Because I basically bought and it And then he no got reason. rid of it, now you're suing for no, it. He no, he didn't get rid of it. He smoked it and came back empty handed. Well, what did you mean by get rid of it? Sell it and make basically Okay, pay so for you don't want anything I, to do with it, but you right. send him no, to sell it for that you. I didn't want anything to do with it. <laughs> okay, well, I asked I mean, him to sell the product so I can get back what I paid for it. Right, I know, okay. And what did you do? You smoked it with a I friend? Went, I went to go sell the weed. I didn't even smoke it, because the first time I smoked it, it then I smoked weed. It didn't get me high, I'm not smoking it again. And it sat there until I thought about it, like, listen, we could do something with it. She said, all right, you could sell it. I went to go sell it. I let my friend taste it because I know what it is. I told him, like, it's not going to be what you used to. He smoked it. He said, I'm not, I don't like this. All right. So I asked other people, nah, how you like it? No, they don't like it. So I went back to her. I said, nobody want the weed. There's nothing I could do with it. And then she got mad that there was a taste test? <laughs> Basically. No. What, what, tell me about the cereal. Um, the point is, I explained to him more than once, I'm buying the food in here. If you're eating, at least leave some for the person that's buying the food. He has no consideration. He will just eat up everything and don't leave me anything. And I got tired of telling him the same thing. Picking up my boxes of cereal, they're both empty. I call so them that's like, what did it for you, the emptiness of the boxes of cereal? Because he had dinner, breakfast, and lunch there. What, what about all that other food? That the, didn't do it for no, you? No, no. It was just the empty At the end of the day, the I was box. sharing the food, so I can, I okay. limited it. So you're sharing on. all food, just not that food? No. Okay. And now the value of the broken hair dryer. According to you, what is it that happened? We were joking around. We always joke around. We was playing around, play fighting, and he had picked me up, so I asked him repeatedly, can you put me down, can you put me down? He takes me and he throws me on top of the dryer, shattering the whole dryer. How did it? Okay, but that's not putting you down. That's that's <laughs> pretty severe. Was it domestic violence that you're no, describing? No, it's not. No, I'm okay, not describing so domestic violence. So how did he? Did he? He put you down and you fell on it. He put no, you down. No, he threw me on the dryer. Where was the dryer? The dryer was inside of a container that's on the ground because it goes, it comes on the stand and also goes on the wall, but it was on the stand. Oh, is it like the helmet dryer? Yes, it's one okay. of those. It's a, lot. it's a professional hair dryer. All right. And it was inside of a container on the ground. And when he threw me, he threw me on top of it when I got He didn't all... throw you on a bed. He didn't throw you on a chair. No, he, he was threw in my you hair on room. the ground, like body slammed you. 
enough to break the hair dryer. Yeah. It because it had to be strong enough to break the hair dryer pretty so much. it doesn't sound like it's playing. That's where I'm getting lost. Welcome back to the People's Court. Harvey Levin here. Would you date a guy if you think the guy is great and then you find out that he just got out of prison uh, after serving six years for stabbing somebody? Um, personally, I wouldn't. I just feel but like... But you liked him before you found out. Still, that would kind of be a turnoff. Really, just a little bit of a turnoff. Huh? Deal breaker. <laughs> Deal breaker. What do you, what yeah, do you, no. what do you say? It depends. Oh, really? On what? On the person. Okay. Like the you person. thought you thought the person was really nice, and then you found out he got convicted. Why did he stab the person? Because they deserved it, is what you're saying? I don't know. Was it self-defense? Well, they went to prison, so I don't think so. Going inside the courtroom. It started off playing, and when he threw me. I landed on the dryer, I got up, because I heard, in the midst of me being thrown on, I heard something cracking. When I got up and I'm moving everything, it's my dryer broken. And what'd you say? You know you're gonna have to buy back my dryer. He tells oh, me, yes, I'll buy back your dryer. So from there, that's Tell when me about trying the to dryer get, him, get in a job. Go ahead. She brought to my attention was, I need a dryer. I'm a hairstylist. That's the only thing I'm missing from my room. She showed me her room, she got all her little stuff together. But she had a dryer. So yeah. why would she say, I need a dryer? I guess, because it was broken. Okay, you're assuming that because of the words, I need a dryer, according to you, yeah. she said. All right, so when you t tell me about you two horsing around, and then did you, when you put her down, did you put her down on the dryer? By act? What's going well, on? Well, we was playing, and I sat her on a dryer, and I got up. And, and she got up, and she started wowing. She like, what was that? Oh, you heard that? So she got up. We started moving stuff. And the bucket was broken, and the dryer was broken, but... So she How like, listen, broken? She physically like, broken, like cracked. I think it was like, I don't know. Do you have I never a seen of the dryer? it. Yes, I, I do. I never seen it before to this incident. Uh huh. I, it was like when she showed me, she like, yo, a piece is broken off. What is that piece that I'm looking at? The thing that goes down? Yes. Is that the part that's broken? Yes. Why can't you just replace that part? Why would you need a I brand new dryer? You. you can't replace the part. I already Says looked. What? Says who? I, I, already, I already called the company. I already called the company. Basically, I have to buy back the whole dryer. That's the issue. Where'd you get the price you said that this would cost? Because I'm looking it up, and I'm not getting that price. Well, you know, I'm getting brand new ones, which are way cheaper than that, and older ones, exact? which are way, way cheaper than that. Where's your proof that it costs six forty nine? Can I see that? Okay. You wrote here that uh, these are the links to five fifteen. That's not your dryer. Your dryer is five fourteen. I look. I just looked at your picture. All right, so let's talk about this. Um, did she finally tell you, get out, I'm done? My stuff was outside, that's how she told me. Okay. It right. really so what did you do when she threw you out, where'd you go? I went to my grandfather's house. And you're right there, same yeah. building. So did you see her all the time? Sometimes. Okay, were you civil with each other? Yeah, it didn't bother me, because I know how females are. <laughs> oh, oh, that's a good thing to say to a female judge. I'm sorry, oh. your honor. Okay, how stupid do you have to be to look a judge in the eyes? Do I not look female to you? But you're a judge. What is it? Like how, just how few brain cells are holding hands up here for you to say, it didn't bother me because I know how females are, and not think that that might be a bad idea to say to me. Wow, y'all deserve each other. <laughs> I'm gonna order you to pay back the value of the actual dryer that was uh, cracked. I don't see where she can buy the piece. The value of that dryer isn't what she's asking for. It's $332. If there was a way for her to repair it by buying the piece, I would just order you to reimburse her the piece. But I, I don't, I'm not gonna sit here and do your job for you because that's something your side should be looking up. But if we can't get you out of bed to look for a job, we're not gonna get you to look for the piece. And after five minutes, I can't find it. Now you gotta pay for the dryer, even if it was an accident because it was negligence. And when you have a car accident, you don't mean to have the car accident, but if it causes damage, you gotta pay. It's the same with this dryer. As far as we just smoked, <laughs> cereal you ate, no, I'm not gonna order you to pay any of that stuff back. But I am ruling in favor of the plaintiff in this case in the amount of the $332 and anything else you're out, why don't you consider it a lesson that maybe you could learn because you're kind of old to be learning lessons. You should know not to take a stray in like that. Oh, I won't. Knowing absolutely nothing about him. You probably didn't do a records check on him to find out why he was in no, prison. No, I did. What if he had been, oh, before you let him in that morning? No, I What did. if he had been pr in prison for raping 10 women? You have no idea what it was. Thank you. So the plaintiff prevails she's gonna get the cost of the dryer. Mr. Butler, have you gotten a job yet? 
No. Kind of hard getting a job when you get out of prison, right? Out yes, of prison, it is. It? Very hard. And you still stand with your grandfather? No. You got another place to live now? Yep. Yes. Okay. Is life getting better? It is, actually. All right. Well, good luck to you. All right. Thank All right. you. Thank you very much. All right. Okay. Ms. Barnett, you know, the judge asked you a good question just right. a moment before at the end. Suppose he'd been in prison for raping women or doing something worse, and you invited him in to stay with you. Yeah, that would have been very short -fold. Whoa. Yeah. Stupid, huh? Yeah, very. I mean, it wasn't too br brilliant what no. you did. Nope, it was not. You learn anything from all this? Oh, yeah. Don't take strays off the street. About time you learned a yeah. lesson. All right. Well, good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate okay. It. Harvey? Okay, you know, the cereal and the stuff that they're suing for here, you know, like the judge says, judge is not going to separate pots and pans and figure out who owns what.